everyone, this is Colleen or Crochazy with yarnwars.com and I am here today to bring you just a little tip of the day. Um, my tip is how to create a seamless perfect foundation chain to start out your dishcloth projects or other similar projects, blankets, towels, anything that you're making that would require you to chain and then come back down. Now in a typical foundation chain usually you'll have just you'll just see the loops down at the bottom part, portion of your project and some projects some patterns will have you come back around after you've completed your project it'll have you finish off with uh, either single crochets or slip stitches throughout just to make it nice and square at the end but with this um, you eliminate the need to do that along the bottom. You basically create the same seamless look from top to bottom very simply. And I am going to show you how to do that. First I'll just quickly show you the typical so that you could kind of see the difference in what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to only chain 10 to show you 5, 6. Now when we're working, um, we'll just say when we're working a dishcloth project, a lot of times what they'll say is um, work a let's say a single crochet or half double or double crochet whatever the pattern calls for um, we're gonna work a single crochet into that second chain from the hook and then into each stitch down from there and this is just your basic pattern here so we're gonna and what typically what you'll do as you'll just go into that top one, some will have you go into both the top and that bottom one. But we're just going to go into that top stitch there, like a lot of patterns will have you do. I apologize for the shaking of the camera and such. Okay, now when we get to the end of this, you're going to see, I'm going to just pull this off. This is our typical start to a dishcloth pattern. I mean, there's so many different dishcloth patterns out there. This is just one of them. But the starting of this is very similar for most projects you're going to do your chaining and then you're going to come in second chain from the hook and you're going to work down your stitches down to the end and what this does is it leaves you with this kind of loop this single row of loops from your foundation chain here Let's see if I can focus this a little better and it's going to make it a little uneven because here you have this nice clean row of stitches and you can see the full stitch at the top to the bottom where again you're just seeing that typical foundation chain look. And I will show you now what I do to get or achieve this nice clean seamless look. Alright again I am going to just chain 10 here my slip knot if I can and chain 10 now like I'd shown you before, typically we'll just go into this top loop from our for our foundation chain and work our way down. But what I like to do is I will slightly turn my project to where I could see this spine on the back. 
Hopefully you can see this okay. But you see these little bumps all the way down our spine. And you just go right into those bumps. And it might be a little awkward at first, but I promise this is pretty quick to get through. Doesn't take that long. And you only have to do it one time. Down the row of your foundation chain. So while I am getting through and going down, you can see these bumps clearly when I just show you the right from the side here where we're working the bumps all the way down. But um, while I finish this up, I will just uh, give you a little little bits of information. Um, we are on Yarn Wars on Facebook. We have a page and a group at facebook.com slash groups slash Yarn Wars or you can visit us at yarnwars.com and I do have a Facebook link to that as well to help get you to where you're going. We have a great group of people at Yarn Wars and always willing to help and some great free patterns coming out there so please join us and I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. I always have some great tips coming out and tutorials and walkthroughs. Okay so I've worked this it almost looks like a little train track here but now you can see that our bottom is the same as our top. You end up with the same number of stitches as you would doing the traditional method, only you have a much more seamless ending. And it just looks nicer and cleaner all around. You don't have to do any kind of finish up with this. And again, as another example, here's a dishcloth that I'm working on right now. And this is the start to my dishcloth down here. And it just looks so much nicer and so much better as far as put together so anyhow, on your next project, give it a try. It's just another way of doing it. And as I said, it is a little awkward going down because this isn't what we're used to doing, but it does turn out so much nicer. And once you get the hang of it, once you start going into those little bumps on the back of your project, on the back of your foundation chain, you're gonna find it's very easy to do. It's a little more awkward with a camera in front of me, but I get through it quickly and I end up with a much nicer result. So I hope this tip has helped you. It's just another method for you to start out these projects, blankets, dishcloths, like I said, anything that requires for you to chain rather than to work in a round, to chain and then to come back. Any kind of back and forth work. This is a great way to start that project. So I hope this has helped and I appreciate you coming by and thank you so much for joining me today on this tip of the day with Crochazy. And I hope you'll come and see me again. Please subscribe. Have a great day. Bye-bye.